intelligence officer, also an adjunct lecturer at the National Defense University in Washington. Nice to see you. Hey, thanks for having me on. You, you, uh, these opinions are my own. I oh, I know. That's how all our guests' opinions are their own opinions. Okay. Hey, you, you, <laughs> you talked about this like, like we do our fall wardrobe. You've got to layer it. And your example was one country might work on the money part. One, you, go through it. Okay, as we start to build a coalition, everybody thinks that we want uh, them to provide military forces or, or sorties to fly over Iraq and Syria to go after ISIS targets. What we really need are partners that can help us with intelligence, share intelligence, uh, curb foreign fighter flow into Syria and Iraq, and also provide uh, the effort to uh, help us defeat ISIS's ability to raise money and earn money on a daily basis uh, through helping us with threat, threat finance, for example. So you don't necessarily need to have uh, aircraft in the air to support this coalition. You just need to be able to stop foreign fighters from coming in, arrest the ones that are going back, debrief them, get information on ISIS uh, targets and ISIS leadership. So we need help along that 500 mile or so Turkish border there, and then you'd right. also need some, some help on the Iraqi-Syria border, the one that we recognize and they don't, right? Exactly. I mean, Turkey, with its, uh, with its capabilities, uh, they could establish a no-fly zone from Turkey without ever having to go into Syria, just based on the radars that they have and some things they could do to uh, help the Sunnis feel less threatened by the Assad regime, which would allow us to go ahead and send in advisors and do some other things to start showing up that anti-ISIS coalition that we need to actually defeat this Sunni ideology. Yep. Yeah. Th then that's it. It's an, it's an ideology. I'm not sure how you defeat an ideology. History is not helpful with me on getting an answer to that question because we haven't seen where that's possible. But I do know that according to everyone I've ever heard from on this issue, we do need boots on the ground. They do not need to be our boots. We need Arab boots. And where are those boots going to come from? Well, here's the thing about uh, defeating the ideology. You do it with Sunnis and you do it with the Quran, and we'll talk about that some other time. As far as boots on the ground, uh, we talk about the 5,000 man, the, the Free Syrian Army. Uh, that's not 5,000 men to go against 30,000 ISIS. That's a 5,000 man command and control structure that you can roll tens of thousands up underneath. Sure, and it'll the Pentagon be, has told us it'll, it'll take one year to train them in Saudi Arabia, so that's a year away. It's a year away. In the meantime, you use uh, temporary alliances to go after ISIS. You use the same tactic ISIS used to go into Iraq by establishing temporary alliances to gain territory. We do the same thing, establish temporary alliances to take territory away. Uh, one key thing about Iraq is ISIS suffered its first strategic setback with the loss of the Mosul Dam and also lost two oil fields that we don't talk about. And most of the ISIS uh, videos of them rolling into towns, that's pre-U.S. airstrikes. They can't do that anymore. So there's some great opportunities to exploit their propaganda machine. All right. Well, you're, I hope you're right. It's nice to talk to you. Thanks very much, Michael Prejean. Okay, thank you. Appreciate it.